uh, the brace that was brought in today. Um, once again, we got it free, which makes it a, a great value. Um, this pretty much is what we would refer to as a rust stick. Um, the handle is in, in pretty dry, but it does turn, which that, that doesn't occur a lot of times. If the head, which the head is not actually a handle, the head's where you apply pressure to it. Um, it only has one handle here, the, the waist handle on it. Uh, if this doesn't turn, it's a problem. It really does need to turn because as you're going around your hand, it'll develop some pretty good heat up in your hand. Um, this should turn also. Uh, which it sounds like there's a couple of birds in there chirping away. So we know that we got some pretty good rust issues. If I were to put this in a tank for electrolysis or even uh, dip in a tank for citric acid and stuff, I got a problem is I have pretty dry raw wood here and I'm going to cause myself some problems. Um, I can't take the woods off of this to speak of. This has uh, two screw heads, flathead screw heads that are holding it in. But I can guarantee you the minute I put any type of torque on that, I'm going to have that lovely little tink sound of the screw separating itself from its uh, threads. And now I've, I've created a great problem. It isn't worth that much to me to try to get this head off. I can, I can deal with it being on. I'm not going to get the, the wrist handle off of this. It's just not going to happen. It's put on during production. It's a single piece of wood. So we're going to try to work with it with, with the wood still attached. But before we we really start taking, I'm going to go over to the wire wheel here and I'm going to try to take most of the rust off. This thing's a tough thing to get on a wheel. The wheel, the way it's set up against the motors, you're going to have to, you know, be torquing this all around. The key is take your time, don't force it into the wheel. Uh, you can sit here and, and rub on it with a pair, a piece of sandpaper if you really got the time, but it, it's, it's going to be tough because you're working with nothing but round surfaces here. So the first thing I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be taking and applying a little bit of oil and get the process started. Uh, with the rust on it, it kind of acts like a, a piece of bread. It grabs that, that oil and just starts pulling it back in. Uh, I'm going to put a little bit of oil even around the wood here. Uh, it's going to swell up the wood a little bit, but what it's going to do is also give me some lubrication against the face. You're not going to get this ratchet off. You could get the ratchet clean of the bow here. There are two pins that in here, but I can almost guarantee you in the state this is in, those pins have rust themselves in. It just isn't worth beating this thing to snot to prove the point that I can get it off to fix it. So instead, I'm going to any of these places that where these collars and everything turn, I'm going to apply some oil in there just to get it, just to get the process started of it sucking it in. And now even right away, that's starting to easily free up as quickly as possible, even as rusty as it is. On this one here, the uh, Boy, it's just not going to give it to me. Let's see if we can actually get the rat. There we go. We got the ratchet to turn. You can see that the shaft of the ratchet is exposed to me, which is nice because now I can get some, some oil back there and start to let it to take in. Actually, for as bad as this is rusted, I have a pretty tight shaft on that. And I'm going to put a little bit up here where the shell and the shaft kind of meet, and we'll let that go in. I'm going to put a little bit of oil and let the ratchets take it in and start running around into the paws. Already, the paws are starting to make a little bit better sound. They're starting to click a little bit more, which means the springs have gotten themselves a little bit of oil in there already. I'm gonna rotate it the other way and see if I can go in reverse. There we go, it finally gave me reverse. So actually, considering how horrible this looks, my ratchet's pretty well intact. So, halfway there. Next thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna, I'm gonna lock it, and then I'm gonna take, and I'm gonna start to take the shell off. All right. And as we take the shell off, it'll allow me to get to the jaws. For as bad as this looks, it took the oil up there and, and oiled it up pretty fair. All right, I'm going to tap my, my jaws out of it. He says trying to tap his jaws out of it. All right, we're going to have to grab it with a pair of pliers, I think. Now, these are spring-loaded sometimes, so you will kind of want to hold your hand over them. Ah, these are spring-loaded. And... One side of the jaws is let loose and they are pretty gunked up. The spring should be in that jaw. Now don't try to take them apart right now. We're going to have to find a way to try to get this spring. There's a small hole up in the back side of this jaw here once I get all this cobwebs. Boy, I have disturbed the spiders this, uh, today for all these tools. We're going to try to get this shaft back up in there where it belongs so it doesn't rub against the outside of the shell. Whoever had this had some pretty thick gunk on it, 
Um, and that actually may have saved ourselves a little bit, the fact that they had some grease in there. But the, the, the jaw should stay sprung open, and that's what we want to try to get this. Now, if this spring is actually broken, free of here, it's still going to function a little bit, but not as smooth as we want. But then again, we started out free. So anything we can pull out of this, we're, we're ahead of the money. All right. So I'm going to take over, and I'm going to try to get the, the knurling on the outside of this shell. You can see a little bit of here. A lot of it's rusted off, and I have a feeling when I go ahead and try to clean this up, I'm going to lose most of whatever grip I had left of this. Uh, but we're going to try to get it cleaned up pretty good. When you're working your wire wheel, you want to pay attention to, to just take little scallops of the wheel as you go around. There's no reason to try to, to get the wheel to do half this whole bow at one time. It's going to pull it up into the machine and smack you. Um, you know, smooth and consistent is where it's going to be here. What do you do if you don't have a motorized unit with, with wire wheels? Get a, you know, any of the small hardware stores, uh, uh, even the home stores or even the secondary discount uh, hand tool stores, will have some sort of arbor that mounts with a wire wheel, it mounts into a regular hand drill. And that generates enough RPM, you can simply you know, clamp it if you can, or hold it to a bench and work it like it, or you can clamp this in a vise and work the wire wheel against it. So I'm gonna go take this to the wire wheel. Uh, I'll be back. Uh, it, it's not the most interesting thing to watch, so we're gonna edit it out, uh, but rest assured, I will tell you, I, I will pay attention to the time it takes me, and uh, we'll let you know what happens. I like to give you the real aspect of this as you're doing it. Okay, in, uh, in actual time, we were gone about 20 minutes. Um, what I'm going to show you here and, and what we did to it to, to prove that we didn't switch props on you here is we're going to have a zoom up of, uh, it, there's some pitting on here that it had some trouble. Um, the oil did a pretty good job of getting in there and even with the wire wheel, it doesn't, doesn't pull all the oil off of there. And my, you know, this is not a clean job. My hands are pretty dirty. Um, but I want you to show you, uh, this is the other side. I only did one side. Um, so that's what it looks like when you're, when you're really doing the, the work. Um, I'm going to go ahead and flip it back over so you can see what it looks. This is the, the grody side and this is the clean side. So other than the fact that my, my wood still looks nice and dry, um, that can be cleaned up, a little bit of tongue oil, linseed oil, however you want to do it. Wouldn't even hurt if you want to have some fun. Throw a little walnut stain on it just to, just to help it, give it some character so the other braces don't talk bad about it when it's on the wall over there. Because uh, they do talk to each other when you're gone. The problem we had with the jaws, um, these are a little bit more second line. They weren't, the cheaper jaws don't have springs. These had a spring. Um, this is how they had the spring pinned uh, earlier. It was simply put down into a trough and part of it was peened over. Well, that had, that had broke it loose on the other side. So what I did was I used a finer punch. I, I moved some metal out of my way because it's pretty malleable, pretty soft. And then I used a, a flat punch. It was an old broken nail set. And once I held this in the vise, I was able to push this wire back under, push it down with a pair of pliers, and then peen this over here with a small hammer and set it with a punch and now I've repaired my jaws back up again. Uh, the shell, which the jaws fit into, um, didn't quite come out like I wanted it to. It would appear that somebody used the, the brace's friend uh, called a pipe wrench. <laughs> uh, even though most of the knurling was gone, somebody has applied new knurling using the jaws of a pipe wrench here, so we had to kind of take a, some of the little pieces that were biting into my hand off of there. Uh, I'm still going to be able to get a good grip on it, but it's not going to be in too bad a shape. Um, I have, uh, I didn't get all the cobwebs out of this one here. I still got one to pull out. I'm going to take, once again, I'm going to just put a drop of oil uh, on the threads. It wouldn't hurt to go in and let me get a little bit of the gunk that's on those threads out of there. And then inside the shell, this back side of the jaw right here rides on it. As the shell pushes it down, it closes these jaws, and as you, uh, as you bring the shell up, they open. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a tiny little drop of oil, and we're just going to share it with our finger on both sides. Once again, it doesn't take a whole, we don't need to bathe it in oil, but it just needs to be in, in the presence. Now, when we set this back in here, we're going to set this in the trough, which is, holds the jaws. We're going to pinch the jaws together and slide this shell down, and then we're going to engage them. 
Let's go ahead and engage them the way it was designed to engage. And we're going to work in. Now I've got that that spins. This spins. Eh. You know, if you guys look away and I spin, I'll make a spin noise and you just lie with me, all right? Uh, but eventually that'll, that'll start to wear itself out. And uh, let's try our latchet. Works one way, works the other. This actually now can go back into service. Um, take the other 20 minutes to finish the other side on the, on the, the wire wheel. Uh, as I was working this, the name Stanley came up on the side of it. So now I'm halfway to identifying what it is. The fact that it's got the name Stanley on it, I know I got some halfway decent quality on this. This brace looks like whoever owned it had gotten it either the, the auger stuck in the wood and used the pipe clamp to get it out, or they were trying to really cut through something thick and they didn't have a, they didn't want to have a different torque setting, they didn't want to have a, a bigger brace to go to, so they added a wrench to the shell to turn it. You know, the shells are pretty uh, minor, it's a good thing he didn't crack it, uh, but this brace can still work. Now, if you're just a casual woodworker and somebody gave you a brace free and you were able to do this work to it, you're ahead of the game. This may be the only brace you'll ever need in your life. Uh, and you can bring it back to life. 